Hey everyone, it's Caitlin. Welcome back to Bandit and Cass. So I've officially run out of room in my current notebook, which means that I will be migrating into a new one coming next month or for October. Because of that, I've decided to launch a two-part series for migrating into a new journal so I can show you guys how I plan for the migration and then how I execute or set up my new bullet journal when I finally move everything in there. This video is going to be part one of this series where I'm going to show you the prep work and reflection I do in order to prepare to migrate into my new journal. Feel free to pick and choose things that I'm doing here that you think will be really helpful for you in your own bullet journal setup. And don't forget before you sit down to migrate into your new journal to grab yourself a cozy beverage and let's get migrating together. Is it just me or did anyone else think of geese migrating together when I said that? No, just me? All right, back into the video. Let's do this. So the first thing I like to do is just do a bit of a review exercise looking at what worked and didn't work in the old journal. This is a take on the yearly review from the bullet journal method and I'll link that below. But in order to do this migration review, shall we call it, all you have to do is make four sections. In each section, you need a prompt. So in section one, it says what worked in your journal. Section two is what didn't work in your journal. Section three is what do you want to do more of in your journal going forward. And section four is what do you want to do less of in your journal going forward. I like to fill out this table in kind of two parts. First, I focus on the worked and didn't work section, writing out spreads or concepts that did or didn't work in my journal. This can be as specific as certain spreads that I really liked or as general as kind of themes that I liked in my journal. For example, one thing I wrote in the worked column is that having a more minimal aesthetic or a more minimal layout in my journal really works for me. Then based on what did and didn't work, I look at the more and less columns and fill those out according to stuff I filled out in the worked and didn't work section. So some stuff that I'm writing down here is that I wanna have more self-care integrated into my journal. I can be a bit serious, so having some fun things integrated, like having a list of fun stuff I wanna do in my free time and having a monthly achievement section, I find just really gets me in a good mental headspace. I also wrote that I wanted to have more creative but minimal spreads, focusing on functionality, but also creativity in the form of lettering, since that's something that really makes me happy. In the last column, I wrote things that I don't really wanna do as much, such as using color and doodles, I really like just using pens in my bullet journal and that's just something I've realized works really well for me. And markers and drawing is just something that I can appreciate from afar in other people's journals. Once I have a good idea of what worked in my journal, what didn't, and what I kind of want to do more and less of going forward into the new journal, I like to take a chance to clarify my bullet journal's purpose. This is a pretty simple exercise, but I find writing it down really emphasizes what exactly you need your bullet journal to serve you for. So in order for me to clarify my purpose for my journal, I write down two columns. What do I need to record or track in my journal? And what do I not need to record or track in my journal? I find this is a good way to really focus in on the boundaries of your journal and what information it does hold and what information it doesn't really need to hold so that when you're coming up with spread ideas, you're not coming up with, let's say, a recipe tracker when you know that you don't keep recipes in your bullet journal. And you know what? If you want to keep everything in your journal, that is totally up to you. It's very much a person-to-person -person thing. And for me, I find that keeping stuff like my finances, my longhand journaling, and my recipes separate really works for me. But just take this time to figure out what works for you and what things have been working well in your journal and being stored in it and what things could be better stored somewhere else. I'm also going in and writing 
my bullet journal meets these needs by and this is essentially a spot where i'm writing how my bullet journal can meet the needs of the things that i need to track so i am writing by having more simple spreads so i can focus on the information and having my bullet journal laid out in a way where I can quickly write down and record things that need to be captured. All right, so now that we have the old journal reviewed, we know what worked, what didn't work, we have re-clarified and defined the purpose for our journal. Now I like to go in and create a plan for my bullet journal migration into the new notebook. So I will be migrating into a Stylogy, except it's a half year this time, not a full year. And that's because I plan to only use this new journal for about three months because I do really like setting up a new journal for the new year. I just find it puts me in a really good headspace and creates that fresh start that I need in January. So right now, with that in mind, I'm creating a list of spreads I want to keep, spreads I want to remove, spreads I want to maybe modify for the new setup, and spreads that I want to add for the new setup. Under the keep section, I want to keep my key, my index, my future log, as well as my daily logs, which are what I use every day and every week. And under the leave section, I want to remove the year at a glance since this will only be for the next three months, so it's not necessary, as well as my 2020 memory spread that I didn't use and my reading tracker since I'll just be referencing this in the old journal and then once 2021 happens, I will set up a new one. For changing, I want to modify my 2020 goals spread and then I want to add a couple spreads that I set up later in the year that I've been really referencing. So now is a perfect opportunity for me to take those spreads and reset them up at the beginning of the journal so they're a lot easier to reference. As I'm going ahead here and making a quick list of the order and the layout of the spreads in my journal, I want to mention how I kind of go through and choose which spreads I want to put in the beginning of my journal. I like to be pretty strict with what I put at the beginning because I don't want to have a giant setup so I only include spreads that I found I reference a lot and that I need to actually carry into the new journal. So I always know things like my key index feature log are going to be moved in there, but I also look through my journal and identify spreads that I'm referencing a lot that I maybe made halfway or a quarter way through. When I first started bullet journaling, I kind of really thought a lot about what spreads I wanted to put at the beginning and I wanted to make sure that everything I could possibly need would be set up at the front so it would be easy to reference. But now I've kind of adopted this system where I will just put the ones at the front that I know I need to use in reference. And then throughout the year, if I create spreads that I reference a lot more, when I finally review that journal, I can identify those and move those up to the front of my new journal. So it's kind of like this cyclical process where you're always setting up spreads throughout your journal as notes or collections that you may later want to reference more and put them at the front of your new setup. So long story short on that, don't stress about getting every single spread you might need at the front. You will probably be setting up a new bullet journal in six months to a year and at that point you'll have the opportunity to review your old journal and put spreads at the front that you actually need. So not sure how long that ramble went on, but at this point I'm writing down the amount of pages I need for my setup as well as a quick supplies list. These are all supplies I already own, but I wanted to kind of jot them down so I could see what I need to work with. And then at the bottom here, I also did a couple color swatches because I want to color categorize my index this year. So these are just a couple color codes that I'm thinking of using. Of course, I will link all the colors below if you're interested, but these are just a mix of Tombow's, Mile Liners, and Pitt Artist Pens by Faber-Castell that I had hanging around. All right, and with those colors out of the way, this is the full migration plan and brainstorm kind of session that I did for my new bullet journal that I'll be setting up in next week's video. If you have any questions about migration and you want to chat, Feel free to drop me a comment and I would love to talk to you. 
And besides that, thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you guys found this helpful, interesting, or at least mildly entertaining. And I will see you in next week's video on Saturday. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.